Okay, 1.5 solving equations. Okay, we've been simplifying. Now we're going to solve equations. Sometimes this is harder, but usually it's actually much easier to solve equations than it was to simplify. Okay, let's start with something you're familiar with, quadratics. Okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and write a quadratic in standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now, if it doesn't equal 0, you want to make it equal 0 by subtracting that number, and then that would change your c. Okay, the first thing you want to do with quadratics is you want to try factoring. And so we've already practiced factoring. To solve by factoring, you would just set each factor equal to 0. That's a pretty easy step to do because then the, the two factors would be linear. Okay? The second one is a good backup in case it doesn't factor, and that is to use the quadratic formula, which you should know, and if you don't know it, then you need to memorize it and never forget it because it comes up a lot in math. You've seen this for multiple years now. There are some songs that go to it, none of which I'm going to sing on this video, so you miss out on that. Sorry. Okay. Now with this, you also have something called the discriminant. All right, I'm going to abbreviate here. And the discriminant is this part that's underneath the square root. Now let's think about that. If that term is greater than zero, meaning a positive number, then plusing and minusing that number would give you two distinct or unique different solutions. And this would give you two real solutions. And I'm bringing up real so you know imaginary has got to come into play. Let's say if b squared minus 4ac was less than 0. Well, it would still give me two solutions, but remember when you square root a negative, you get an imaginary solution. This is where you get two imaginary or complex solutions. Okay? And then what happens if it actually equals 0? Well, plus minus square root of 0, it's the same number. So this is, whoops, this is just one real solution. And it's actually a double, or you could call it a multiplicity, where the solution counts twice, which is causing unique things on the graph. Not for today's lesson. I'm going to move on. Okay, another way you can solve this is by completing the square. Now this is actually very useful when you're trying to get a quadratic from standard form into vertex form but it's not very useful at all for a solving tool, so I'm really not going to use that at all. But you learned it in Algebra 2, and if you want to use it, you could. All right, then the last thing would be graphing. This is what you learned on that first day, graphing uh, equations and inequalities. And what you would want to do here is to graph this quadratic, which would be a parabola, and you would want to find where it crosses the x-axis. So you're finding the zeros or you are finding the x-intercepts, the roots, you remember all those terms. Okay, we're going to be focusing more on 1 and 2, particularly right now I'm going to focus on 2. Okay, so let's say I gave you this equation. 2x squared minus x minus 1 half equals 0. Now, that 1 half kind of freaks me out a little bit, so I'm going to get rid of it. This is the nice thing about equations. You can do anything you want as long as you do it to both sides. So I'm going to multiply by 2. I'm going to get 4x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. I don't have a fraction anymore. Now, I already told you this isn't going to factor, but we can see now clearly that it's not. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and there's no way I can get an addition of negative 2 out of that. So remember, you have your a, b, and c. And we're going to use quadratic formula. So negative, negative 2, which would give you positive 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 2 squared, minus 4 times a, which is also 4, times c, which is negative 1, all over 2a, or 2 times 4. Now we just need to simplify this expression. 2 plus or minus the square root of, so this becomes 4 plus 16, that gives me 20, all over 8. All right, let's split this up. 2 over 8 plus minus, square root of 20 is 2 root 5 over 8, and then that becomes 1 fourth plus minus root 5 over 4. 
Now, if you wanted to write this back as one fraction, you could. The reason I encourage students to split this up is because they tend to want to just simplify the 2 with the 8, and they don't, not on both of them, but just on one of them. So I always split it up and then simplify it, and I rarely put it back together again. All right, when you get a radical answer like this, okay, or an irrational answer, meaning it cannot be written as a nice decimal, um, then there was no way that you could have factored it. But this is real, okay? So root 5 is real. Now, if this 5 had been negative, I would have had imaginary. All right, but I'm not going to get too much into that today. Okay, let's talk about another one that you we've already done, and that's rational. So quadratics and polynomials, for the most part, are solved like quadratics. You would want to try factoring first. If factoring doesn't work, there are other things to do, but factoring is the way to go with those. Rational is a little different story. Okay, let's say we had x over 2x plus 7 minus x plus 1 over x plus 3 equals 1. All right. If you were just simplifying, you would want to get a common denominator. We're solving, though. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to multiply both sides by the LCD. And I can, whatever I do to one side, I can do to the other. Just like on the previous problem when I multiplied both sides by 2. So the LCD, in this case, is just 2x plus 7 times x plus 3. So I'm going to go ahead and just squeeze it in right here. So multiply this whole side and this side by that expression. Okay, the reason this works is because like here the 2x plus 7's cancel because they divide out to 1. And you're left with x times x plus 3. And the next one, the x plus 3's cancel and you're left with x plus 1 times 2x plus 7. And then on the right hand side, that's, you know, sometimes that's another number. In this case, it was just one, so I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite what I have. Okay, let's multiply everything out, and this is a polynomial. Hopefully, it'll get down to a quadratic. Hopefully, one I can factor. If not, though, I have quadratic formula. So I have x squared plus 3x minus, now I'm going to go ahead and FOIL this and distribute the negative to each term. x times 2x, that's 2x squared. Outside would be 7x, but again, distributing the negative, so minus 7x. Inside would be 2x, distribute the negative. And then last would be 7, distribute the negative. Okay, over here I have 2x squared plus 6x plus 7x plus 21. Let's clean up the left-hand side. x squared, negative 2x squared, that's negative x squared. And then 3x 3 minus 7 minus 2. Okay, so 3 minus 7 is negative 4x, minus 2x is negative 6x. And then minus 7. It doesn't matter which side you want to work on. I'm looking though over here and I'm thinking it would be much easier to go ahead and add x squared and to add 6x. Remember that with quadratics, which is what this is turned into, you want one side to be 0. So I have that now. And I have 3x squared plus 19x plus 28. Now if you can... Okay, let's solve out this quadratic. This is kind of a more difficult one. You might be wanting to reach for your calculator, but let's try to do it without. So. Since I have a leading coefficient of 3, I need to do 3 times 28. And um, the way I kind of think about this is 3 times 28, well, 3 times 20 would be 60. 3 times 8 would be 24. So what's 60 plus 24? That's 84. And so we want to break 84 up into a factor pair that adds to 19. Okay? You can start with 1 and 84, although I know that's really not going to be a good one. All right. Um, but if it helps you to kind of write them out, know that you're kind of going in order. 2 and 42, obviously it's not going to be right. Um, 4, what would 4 be a factor pair with? 
And if you're kind of getting lost with 84, just think about 3 and times 28. So 28 divided by 4 would be 7, and 7 times 3 would be 21. So I'm getting closer. All right, let's think about 7. That would be then 4 times 3, that's 12, and there we go, 7 and 12. This is about as hard of a factoring problem as you're going to get. It's annoying, but it's not anything that's out of your league. Okay, so then we have, let's factor out an x, and I have 3x plus 7. All right, now I want to have 3x plus 7 over here, and in order to do that, I need to um, take out a 4, it looks like, yeah. So then I have 0 equals x plus 4, and then 3x plus 7. And let me move this up just a little bit. So, so then I would have x plus 4 equals 0. This is how you solve a problem with factoring. So then x would equal negative 4 and x would equal negative 7 thirds. So just subtracted the 7 divided by 3. And this is what it looks like my two solutions are. Now, one thing you've always got to do with things that don't have a domain of all real numbers, like quadratics have domain of all real numbers, so you don't have to worry about this. But something like a rational, you need to make sure that your solution, when you plug it back into the original problem, doesn't give you, it's not an extraneous solution, if you remember this phrase. It's kind of like, extraneous is kind of like a false positive, all right? I'm going to write it over here because um, we don't really, it doesn't happen actually in this problem, but it could happen. Remember extraneous is you plug it in and it doesn't work. In this case, extraneous would be where you plug it in and it gives you a zero in the denominator. That would be an undefined expression, which would not give me a good solution. But both of these are totally fine if you think about it, it would be fine. But let's say that I had these answers, but in my original problem, there was something like x plus 4 in the denominator. Then negative 4 would be an extraneous solution. Okay? All right, let's talk about absolute value. And I'm reviewing a whole lot here, so if you have questions, please bring them to class. Um, I'm going to write this in black. Okay, so 3x plus 5, the absolute value, equals 1. Now, first off, if this had been equal to negative 1, we would have known right off the bat there'd be no solution because absolute value of something would always be greater than or equal to 0. This is saying that 3x plus 5 is one unit away from 0 on the number line. So it yields itself to two solutions. It actually, just the 3x plus 5 could be 1, or it could be negative 1. And both of these would be solutions. Okay, because when you take absolute value of 1, you get 1. But also when you take absolute value of negative 1, you get 1. And then you just solve each of these. So then that would be x equals 4 thirds. And then over here, you'd have 3x equals negative 6. And then x would be equal to negative 2. Now, again, um, I'm sorry, this is negative 4 thirds. Again, you would want to check for extraneous solutions. What you want to make sure is that you don't want to plug this in and it not equal, which could happen here. Okay, So let's just plug it in. 3 times negative um, 4 thirds, that would give me negative 4, plus 5 is 1, so that works, good. And that would give you negative 6 plus 5, that's negative 1, but when you take absolute value, you get 1 as well. And these are a little bit more rare, but you could have an extraneous solution on these. All right, let's now talk about radical equations. Okay, let's say I had the square root of 5 minus x plus 1 equaling x minus 2. All right, now, I don't know if you remember this from Algebra 2, but the fact that I have x inside and outside the radical is actually going to make this one 
probably more difficult. Um, but definitely subtracting this one out is going to make it easier to solve. So that becomes x minus 3. Now, I have to square both sides. And when you square over here, you got to square everything. So that gives me 5 minus x equals... You can't just square the x and square the 3. It's actually almost easier if you just write it twice. So then that would give you minus 3x minus 3x. That makes minus 6x and then plus 9. This is now a radical. I'm going to subtract 5 and add x. You line everything up. So you get 0 equals x squared minus 5x plus 4. And if you can factor this to solve, great. If not, quadratic formula. Good thing on this one, it factors and it's really easy. So then um, I have x minus 1 equal to 0. So one of my solutions is 1. And then x minus 4 equal to 0. And another solution is x equals 4. All right, now remember what I said, particularly about problems that don't have a domain of all real numbers, you've got to check for extraneous. So let's plug in a 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. Square root that, you get 2. And so 2 plus 1, you get 3 on one side. Let's see if we get 3 on the other side. 1 minus 2, and I get negative 1. Nope, that's extraneous. You don't have to write extraneous, you just have to cross off that answer. It's not a good answer. All right, 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. Square root that, you get 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. On the other side, you get 4 minus 2. That's also 2. Good. That's a good solution. Okay, last type of equation. A literal equation. The reason these are called literal equations is because they have a lot of letters in them. These are typically formulas that you're trying to, or multivariable equations, that you're trying to isolate a variable. So in this one I have ax minus b divided by cx minus d, and that equals 2, and then I have to tell you what you're solving for. It may be x, it may be another letter. In this case, it is x. So you're trying to isolate x. You're not going to have a number answer or anything like that. Um, in this particular problem, you can think of it like a rational, like multiplying both sides by the LCD, or you could just think of it as cross-multiplying. So on one side, you'd have AX minus B, and on another side, you'd have 2, parentheses, CX minus D. Now, the fact that X is on two sides tells me that I'm going to have to factor at some point or do something. But um, for right now, I just need to distribute that too. So I have 2CX minus 2D. I need to get the x's on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 2CX from both sides. So I have AX minus 2CX and then minus B equals negative 2D. I need to add that B over. Now when you add this B over, it's just a lot cleaner looking to go ahead and write it first since it's the positive term. Now, I already kind of hinted at this, but because the x is there twice, we're going to have to factor that out. That's the only way to isolate it. And now, hopefully, the very last step is obvious. Divide by a minus 2c. So here's your answer. x equals b minus 2d over a minus 2c. Um, let me write another expression, and I want you to tell me if you think they're equivalent. 2d minus b over 2c minus a. Do you think these are equivalent expressions? They are. It's just factoring out a negative 1. And if I had in the very beginning gotten, everything, gotten the x's on the right-hand side, then this is the expression I would have gotten. Okay, bring your questions to class.